When I meet so-called financial experts today, most of them don't even remember 2008. They're so young, all they know is a bull market. All they know is that interest rates kept dropping, bond rates kept dropping, the price of stocks went up, real estate went up, everything was going up. You know, we call it the everything bubble. Be careful of the age of the person you take advice from too. Oh. So, you know, a bond is this, let's say if a bond is playing 10% is worth so much money. But if the interest rates, inflation goes to 20%, the value of the bond drops. And what most people do not realize, the bond market is a million times bigger than the stock market. The point here is back when I was just starting out, there are exciting times. And that's what I'm saying is how old was the advisor? But this is the other part about it is so many of these idiots out there, you know, there's no cure for stupidity. We've seen a lot of it over our times, but this, oh, I have the 60, 40 mix. That means they have 40% yeah. this and 60% bonds. And they're operating by these formulas that worked right after 2008. This ain't 2008. The point here, ladies and gentlemen, this bond market is the biggest in the world. It is the thing that keeps this whole place floating. It's what's keeping this whole world floating. I want to go on record and rich dad put it. I said, savers are losers. Why would you save dollars when they're printing it? Counterfeit money. It makes no sense to me. The reason dates are important is things are changing moment by moment. And the end is near. We don't know which way it's going to fall to. Give us those three things you got to look out for. One of them is, one of the things I'm happy about is I'm an old man, you know, and I meet these young, I mean, I feel for these guys. I mean, they're saying, oh, my dad gave me your book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, I'm investing in real estate, I'm doing this. I want to say, we've seen the euphoria, right? And in euphoric times, you know, it's about to end. A fundamental investment, people look at a financial statement, income, expense, assets, liabilities. That's fundamentals. That's Warren Buffett's big gig. Technical, uh, the ups and downs, basically the emotions and moods and the flows in the market. Now, the thing that's interesting is Buffett says he doesn't believe in technical analysis. And so we have a, my generation, we have so many people just follow, buy, hold and pray of Buffett. Buffett's our God. And I go, are you nuts? You've got to look advanced technicals. But anyway, that's the real market it goes up and everything comes down. I don't recommend shorting because that is Probably one of the riskier traits you can do because you're selling something. You know, I took technical analysis and technical trading for three years. And I realized I'm a real estate guy. <laughs> and three years studying technical analysis. I'm a real estate guy. What does a short mean? To me, that is probably as high a risk as you can take. So let's say you see Apple shares at $10 and you think, I think it's going to go to five. So you sell a million shares of Apple stock at 10, hoping it goes to five where you'll buy it back and all this other stuff, but Apple goes to a hundred. So that's why you get caught with your pants down because now you have to buy the million shares you sold, but at a higher price. I just don't want to paint, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm become a shorter. I tried it, I got my ass handed to me. The point is people need to get educated but it goes back to rule number one, make sure somebody's got over 44 years of experience before you take advice. I hear it probably five times a day. Some guy or a young woman will come up and say, my dad gave me your book and I'm going long real estate. I'm going, are you shitting me? Do you know what I mean? After, if interest rates go up, what happens to real estate? Down, right? People say, is it recession? So we're already in a recession, depression's coming. And that's yes. why you mentioned 1930. What happened in 1929 was that 29 crash, how long did that last depression last? 25 years, 29 exactly. to 54. Also, you're talking about the opportunity of a lifetime. And the reason having experiences, you know, I own um, several tons of gold now and I own oil wells. And when oil went from $30 a barrel to 130 a barrel a few weeks ago, I got stimulated. I said, oh my God, the problem with oil going from 30 to 130 just temporarily was it wiped out the middle class, inflation, and food prices are gonna go through the roof because natural gas and oil go hand in hand, and that's how you make fertilizer. And all these greenies wanna stop all that, I'm going, are you yeah. nuts? Are you nuts? It, now, what happened to most of them was when they handed out the brains, they were missing in action at that time. <laughs> anyway, the point here is this, I was just watching CNBC, I think, and they were playing the um, hearings with Janet Yellen, and she's a greenie. She spent all this time talking about global warming yeah. and I'm going, what about inflation? What about the war? Yeah. What about the debt? What do you... And she's now a greenie. As you said, these guys are nuts. 
and we're yeah. listening to them. So that's why I own gold, silver, you know, I have some Bitcoin just to speculate into it. But you have Treasury Yellen, you have Fed, and then you have this guy Biden and Kamala, the uh, borders are. She's never been to the border except the Ukraine. So, I mean, it can't get any stranger than this. There's tortoise and hares. Guys who are short are hares, they're rabbits. Real estate guys are tortoises. And <laughs> I'm a tortoise. <laughs> you must recognize your weaknesses. Yeah. I don't so, own stocks, but I own gold mines. You know exactly. what I mean? And I own tons of gold that I control. And Not I own oil well wells. I don't own Exxon or BP and all that stuff. I own the oil well. I'm a hard asset guy, but I'm still the fat ass turtle walking around the place. But I got to be ahead of the curve here. And that's when the changes started because in 1971, <clears throat> Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. And I was flying in Vietnam at that time as a Marine. I said, what does that mean? What does that mean? And well, taking the dollar off the gold standard said money became trash. And then I come home and my poor dad always say to me, well, you got to go to school and save money. Oh, Jesus. I said, well, why am I going to listen to an old Japanese guy, my father? <laughs> so I went to listen to an old Chinese guy, my rich dad. <laughs> I get a little disturbed every time because it happens like five times a day. A young man or young woman come up to me. Oh, I'm getting my real estate license. Oh, I'm buying real estate. I said, at the top of a market? You have no idea what it was like. Some of you were too young. I'd go into a Chinese restaurant and they had white out on all the menus. <laughs> I like Chinese food. But anyway, so one day rice would be a buck. Next day it'd be two bucks. And they had to keep whiting stuff out. You know, I'm going, holy mackerel. And then I put together, when I was flying in Vietnam, why my rich dad, who was Chinese, said, watch out, because they took the dollar off the gold standard. They're gonna print money. It's called money supply, not interest rates. So they're gonna try and raise interest rates to slow down the economy, and they're gonna exacerbate. We're in a recession already, because things are slowing. The velocity of money is slowing at high rates of speed, but also it's gonna crash the economy, and we may be going into a depression. Now, oh, you're such a bad news guy. I tell you something, I learned more in the 70s than I do today. Because when I was trying to put a real estate together when interest rates are 20%, you get really smart. I mean, I had to be creative and all this, still make it cash flow. So ladies and gentlemen, it's only, you know, how creative, how smart you are in the future and how resourceful and resilient you are. Because I'm afraid 2022, we're heading into a depression. It's going to be a recession. That's a given. We're already there, technically. But a depression is going to be a whole nother Magilla. And some people will be wiped out. It's the last depression gave us communism. And I'm afraid this guy Biden and Kamala are agents of who will know. But anyway, and then there's always a silver lining. If China invades Taiwan, I'm a billionaire. But other people get wiped out. It's the best <laughs> defense you can have against Biden, Putin, Xi, Treasury Secretary, what's her name? Uh, Janet Yellen. Oh my God. And